We need to remember our kids are watching us and what we do speaks way louder than what we say. So there's positive ways that we can model to our children. And I love this this quote, basically. It says, you say, God says. And often, I don't know if you've ever thought, I just can't figure it out. And God says, I will direct your paths. I mean, with it, with a child, I'm sure you've had one of your children come to me, come to you and say they just can't figure it out. And we have an opportunity to sit with them and model and believe in them and help them figure it out. You might have a child that comes home and says, nobody loves me. Have you ever had a child that come, come home and said that? A few, few nods. And we can show them that you love them. We can, we can model to them that you love them. Or I can't do it. We've all heard that, I can't do it. And we can, in God, you can do all things. All things are possible. So it's really important that we create an environment where we model positive things to our children. And that's just one way you could do it. So it's all about your core beliefs and helping to teach your children and show them how they can build resilience. And it's really important to create a positive environment for growth. And one way you do that is unconditional love. Now, this is easy to say and very hard to do. So, and often our children need us the most when their behaviour is at its worst. Because that's at that point when they're screaming at us, there's something wrong. And often we want to go the other way at that point. But we need to sit sit with them and take time and care for them at those moments. I remember just last year, one of my children came home and they'd had one of those days, you know, those days where everything went wrong and there'd been a series of different, probably three or four events and they came and are sitting in the kitchen and I just had it in my head, today is the day I keep my mouth shut. And so I did, I pretty much from a mental perspective, kept my mouth shut, opened my ears and literally said almost nothing for about 20 minutes. And then they finished their rant and it certainly was one. And they said, oh, thanks, Mum, I feel so much better now. (laughs) And all I did was keep my mouth shut. So it's really important to love that, have that unconditional love. And it's not dependent on what they do or what their their behaviour is at that particular time. Support, it's always important to support our children however we can and create a supportive environment. Belief. Now, Kev's going to speak into this a lot more, but it's always really important to believe in our children. Believe, give them hope that they can achieve different things. And then facilitate problem solving wherever possible. So instead of just rescuing or doing it for them, which sometimes it's so much easier just to do it for them, But how can you ask questions so you can empower them to solve it for themselves wherever appropriate? And I just wanted to finish on this Bible verse in this section. It's 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes and always perseveres. Love never fails. It's a big call and all those things there are about a choice. Will we choose to keep loving our kids regardless of their behaviour? Mindset. Mindset is really key when it comes to resilience. I like to talk about fixed versus growth mindset. Now, I didn't tell Kev or Andy this, but I was going to use them as an example. So this is a a book called Mindset by Carol Dweck. And probably the easiest way to explain it is to say both Kev and Andy just got a mass test back. They sat exactly the same mass test and they got exactly the same score. And they both got 55%. Now, that <laughs> now neither of them were happy with that score. Okay, so the event was exactly the same. But the, res- the response is different depending on their mindset. Now, Kev has a fixed mindset, which he doesn't normally, which is really funny. <laughs> 
Kev has a fixed mindset and the fixed mindset says that says something about him and his ability to do maths. And so he says, I can't do maths and I'm not interested. There we go. That's it. He's not going to do his maths anymore, at least not put the effort in. Andy has a growth mindset and he says, all right, maybe studying the night before wasn't a very good idea. Maybe I should listen in class and actually do my problems before I turn up to class. I'm not happy with that, Mark. I'm going to do something about it. And that's really a snapshot between the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. So I encourage you all to have a growth mindset where you, whenever a situation is and you're not happy with it, think about what you can do differently, how you can continually grow in your intelligence. And a growth mindset says, I can, I can get smarter, I can get better, I can do it better. A fixed mindset says, I can't do it, pretty much full stop. Then there's the negative versus positive thinking. There's a book called The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. And if you can put a positive mindset with a growth mindset, then you've got a winning com combination. Because a positive, positive thinking, Don was great at that. He'd always look for the positive. What can I do instead of what can't I do? And he, d he did amazing things regardless of his disability. I love this quote from Henry Ford. It's that whole idea, if you think you can't do it, then you usually end up not doing it. The next, the last one is growth opportunities. How are we as a person and as a parent providing growth opportunities for ourselves and our children? Now, Diana Sterling's got a book called The Parent as, as Coach Approach. And she's, she talks about that idea of support versus rescue. And how if you support children, then you empower them to do it for themselves. If you rescue them, you take them away. And there's a lot of research. I don't know if you've heard about the helicopter parent. You know, the hover, 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 hover. Grab the child, get them out of the situation before they can. And they're finding more and more that's disabling the child. And it actually means that they do less and less things. So it's really important as a parent, wherever possible, to support them to do new things. Instead of doing their homework for them, and I know plenty of parents have done that, you sit beside them and break it down for them and teach them how to do it for themselves. And then the other growth opportunity is comfort zone versus out of comfort zone. Now, it's, it's nice to be in a comfort zone because it feels really safe, doesn't it? But sometimes we can get so caught in our comfort zone that we don't end up moving forward. I remember it was about two years ago now, I decided that I, I was going to do some public speaking uh, things and I decided to join Toastmasters. And I remember the first day and I was really nervous and I went with a visitor, there was two of us that were visitors that day. And we got through nearly the whole, it's for an hour, and we got through the whole session without having to speak and we're thinking, oh, this is really good, we don't have to talk. And then just at the very end, we were asked if we wanted to speak. And the, and the, and the lady beside me within two sec seconds said, no, thank you, like that. And I thought, well, I either jump in and have a go or I stay in my comfort zone and possibly never come back again. I had a go. Was I really good at it? Absolutely not. But I had a go and it was a start to get better at something that I really wanted to improve on. And the other lady who decided to stay in a comfort zone, which is fine, it's always your choice, never came back. So it's good to push through your comfort zone because you end up being able to move through life and achieve more things. So I want to leave you on a picture summary. So one, the first way you can build resilience in yourself and others is through faith. Knowing what you cl clearly believe, your core beliefs and your values, your family values, is really important and then it's up to us to find role models and model resilience to our children and teach them how to be resilient mindset i encourage you to have a growth mindset and a positive mindset and then the last one is opportunities to grow for yourself and for your children and i want to leave you on a quote your life does not get better by chance, it gets better by change. Thank you.